Hello again and welcome back to this video. By now we have covered significant preparatory ground. Today we'll actually spend some time working in Stat Pro trying to create the geometry of the goalpost frame that we have been studying. But before doing that, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and join us in this wonderful journey of learning structure analysis with Stat Pro. Else you'll be missing out. Just as a reminder, for this goalpost frame, we had four nodes. So node one had our coordinates, since the, the coordinate specification for node one was zero, zero, zero. Remember that the units of these coordinates are in meters. Node two had coordinates of zero, three, zero. Node three, had coordinates of 5, 3, 0 and node 4 had coordinates of 5, 0, 0. The member 1 is defined between node 1 and node 2. So this is member 1. Member 2 is defined between node 2 and 3. So this is member 2. And member 3 is defined between nodes 3 and 4. So this is member 3. It's a good idea to go back to the videos 13 and 14 if there are any confusion with this or for the details on what we had discussed in those videos on this. Now we will look to model the geometry of the goalpost frame in Stat Pro using the text editor. So we get into Stat Pro and click on New. We need to give it a file name. So let us say that the file name is goalpost frame underscore using text editor. We want to ensure that we select the type as analytical. Now there is a reason why we have selected analytical but we won't go into details of that in this series uh, to avoid confusion. We ensure that the units are metric units and uh, one of the things that we would um, like to ensure is that we are saving the files in the right location. So um, I will select this particular folder and I will save the file in here. Now we are complete with this information and uh, we will ignore uh, entering the job info for now. And once we are done, we click on the create button. This takes us into the graphical user interface of Stat Pro, the, the modeling mode, but we won't be using the graphical user interface to model the structure. What we would use is the text editor instead. So to bring up the text editor, we need to just follow the cursor of my mouse. We will need to go to the utilities option and click on the command file editor. This brings up the text editor uh, on the screen. But before working in the text editor, let us write down the command lines in sequence. So in the very beginning, we would need to define the structure type as plane. So as we remember, the command for that has to be defined in the very beginning. And the command for that is stat plane. We now understand the implication of defining a structure type as plane. If not, please revisit video 15 for a refresher. The next command to define is the unit system instead. Now we have discussed the unit system in the last video. So you can visit that for more detailed information. As you know, we do not need to define the force units to define the geometry of the structure, but we will need the length units, which has to be in meters 
as we intend to define the coordinate system in meters. But for the stat command, we have to define the force units as well. So let us go with kilonewton units for force. Thus, we would define the unit system in the next command line as unit meter kilonewtons. Now that the unit system has been defined in the command lines, joint coordinates will now make sense. So our next set of commands involve specifying the joint coordinates. So this has to start with the command joint coordinates followed by the coordinate specifications for these nodes in a sequential order. So for node number one the coordinates are 0, 0 and 0. So it has to be in the command line that has to be separated using this semicolon sign. Then we, that is followed by the coordinates of node 2, which is 0, 3, 0. So we write 0, 3, 0, followed by a semicolon. Node 3 has the coordinates of 5, 3, 0. And node 4 has the coordinates 5, 0, 0. Now, I am reminding you once again that since the length units has been defined in meters, so this would mean 0 meter, 0 meter, 0 meter. For node 2, it would mean 0 meter, 3 meter, 0 meter. For node 3, it would mean 5 meter, 3 meter, 0 meter. And for node 4, it would mean 5 meters, 0 meters, and 0 meters. Now, once we have defined the joint coordinates, we would now need to define the member incidences. So, we have to start with the command line Let me rewrite that once again. Over on the space. So as soon as you write this command, Stan would understand that the next specifications that would be defined are, would be the member incidences. So firstly we will define the member incidences of member number one. So member number one is defined between nodes one and two. So followed by line, followed by the numbers one and two. Member number two defined between nodes 2 and 3. So member number 2 defined between nodes 2 and 3. So they will be followed by a semicolon. And member number 3 is defined between nodes 3 and 4. So member number 3 defined between nodes 3 and 4. So we have to understand that Stan would read these command lines sequential. So, the order of the syntax is very important. For example, the member incidences cannot be defined before joint coordinates because for this member incidences to make sense, Stan has to understand that what this is and what this is and where are they defined. So, the joint coordinates needs to come before this. So, Stan would, like a computer program, Stan would execute this command line sequentially. So, the joint coordinates needs to come before the member incidences. So, this has to be dealt with utmost care. Similarly, the unit system has to come before the joint coordinates because without this unit system being defined, the length units being defined, 
this join coordinates would make no sense whatsoever. So I hope you got this sequence of commands. The first thing would be whether the structure is stat, plane or space, whether the structure type is plane or space. The next is you need to define the length units, then you would need to define the join coordinates and then you would need to define the member incidences. So these four steps would lead to the creation of the geometry in stat. Now let us see how we can define these command lines in the stat text editor. So we can see that stat by default has created uh, the structure type as space. So we need to change that to plane. Uh, we see that uh, the start job information, the engineer date and the end job information has been put in there by default and also the input with 79 has been put in there by default. So we let it, uh, these commands be there as it is and we do not tamper with it for now. So the next thing that we would need to specify is the unit system but before specifying the unit system let me tell you that whatever commands you need to specify you need to specify before the finish command say if you are trying to specify anything after the finish command stat would disregard those commands uh, as is evident uh, by this whatever i have typed in after the finish command being grayed out so i have typed in abc and you can see how they are being grayed out which uh, is a sign that this lines are not being entertained by stand at all. So even if you type anything after the finish command, stand would completely disregard those. So to have your commands being entertained, you have to enter that before the finish command. Okay, now first thing that we need to do is to enter the unit system as we had uh, discussed uh, and we have wrote down the command sequence on the board. So we follow that. So the first thing we would do is specify the units as uh, meter kilonewtons and then we would specify the joint coordinates command and the coordinate of the first node now you know that coordinates are in the meter unit system first node was 0 meter 0 meter and 0 meter so 1 0 0 0 we separate now we specify node 2 but before that we put a semicolon to separate the specifications so now we specify the coordinates of node 2 as 0 3 0 separate that by semicolon again and then for the third node we specify the coordinates as 5 3 0 followed by a semicolon and finally the fourth node where the coordinates are 5, sorry, 5, 0, 0. Finish that by a semicolon. The next thing that we want to um, input are the member incidences. So we type this command, member incidences, and then specify the member incidences of the various member. Now we know that member 1 is created between node 1 and node 2. Member 2 is created between node 2 and node 3 and member number 3 is created between node 3 and node 4. So we have finished our specifications. So we can go to the file option and click on save so that whatever changes we have made is saved and we come out of the text editor. We could see that the goalpost frame is now automatically created. You may also notice that uh, these tables are filled up automatically, but uh, we won't discuss this now. We would be using these tables to create the goalpost frame uh, in, in one of our next videos. Now we can see that uh, the goalpost frame uh, is being displayed there in the isometric view, which is the default view. And if you want to view this in the XY plane or from the front view, you need to go to the view option and click on the front view option here so that you would see the goalpost frame in the XY plane. We will continue to explore the geometry a little further in our next video. 
we have spent some time today in doing some hands-on with Instat Pro. So if you have liked this video today, please hit the like button and please press the bell icon for more notification from the Structural Insiders channel. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.